Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail and I have several clips for you tonight. I have two from Judge West in Texas. I've got one from Judge Boyd in Texas. I have, who's next? One from Judge Melissa Moen in Wisconsin. She has a good one. This person is the horrible. She's the horrible one. And Judge Stevens, just a really short one. He doesn't like what the defendant's wearing. And then the last one is the Truly Crazy. That's with Judge Hart in Kansas. I'll let you guys watch. That's um, Erica Johnson. It's 2138523. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. You're Derricka Johnson. And Ms. Johnson was previously in court, entered pleas of true in a motion to revoke probation uh, to counts one through four uh, on probation uh, for aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury. And that was a six year deferred probation. I've received an updated pre sentence report. Has everyone had an opportunity to review that report? Yeah, yeah. Are there any additions or corrections? No, yes. And there was no agreement, correct? I agree. Um, also, just for everyone, um, and if we can get copies if you guys need it, I am also reviewing uh, jail uh, incident reports as well. Um, Mr. Rojas, you may proceed. Judge, as the court knows, this is Ms. Johnson's third motion to revoke. Uh, she's, given, she's been given opportunities in the past to comply with. Uh, I had said uh, MRT and, and, uh, and some mental health counseling. She hasn't taken advantage of all those opportunities. Uh, she she has some CPS cases going on. She's kind of doing double double little case where she's got some CPS cases in Harris County. She's taking some classes through there. And that had been her focus up to now, she's trying to get her kids back. Um, I've discussed this current motion with her. She understands that uh, the options the court has this morning are to go to probation center for prison or to try one more time and get her some help through either ISF or safety. Uh, in discussion with Ms. Johnson this morning, she would, uh, I think the option that she would rather do is to ask the court for some mercy and give her the uh, lowest amount of time in prison possible. We would request something in the neighborhood of two to four years. Um, she this point doesn't feel that uh, she needs a drug treatment and the ISF program is this thing that while she, she was removed last time because she's pregnant, she's not pregnant right now. So I think this would be the perfect time for her to get the ISF and get that help. Uh, she tells me that she doesn't want that. She would just let me go to prison and get this case over. Here. Ms. Malfino? Judge, I concur with uh, Ms. Lopez's update. The PSI is very thorough and goes through every opportunity this um, individual has been given by the court. It's a shame she doesn't want the help. Um, really could help her. I mean, if she was using last time while she was pregnant, she's obviously somebody who has an issue that needs to be addressed. But she doesn't want to help. I think she shouldn't take up someone else who wants to help spot. And so I think revocation is appropriate with uh, something in mid, at least in the mid range. Judge. Judge, I got the, let me just let me look real quick. see what this looks mm -hmm. like. She had one prior MTRP and was given 120 day sanction at that time in 2023. I mean, the facts of the underlying case, I think she threw a bottle at a girl and, and waved the knife at another. We pled on dismissed from the region. I think. Nobody was injured, judges. Just threats, basically. Well, she threw the bottle, attempting to hit someone else, but it, it hit it someone, but it else. hit someone else in the head. Well, there's no accidentally. You meant to hit somebody with it. You just hit the wrong person. Right? No. No, because Ms. Johnson, you have been coming here now. 
way too long and been given every single opportunity to stop talking over me because right now what you're looking at that I can do is give you between two and 20 years in prison. And the more you talk over me and are disrespectful, the higher number that's going to get. Do you understand? You have been, I don't, I'm not even sure how many times now that you've been in here pregnant using drugs while you're pregnant, while we're trying to get you help. Um, you have five kids that you have no custody of. You're, it, it's the jail incident reports are ridiculous. And then you want to come in and say, I just want to get this over with. Give me a couple years in prison, which you probably have credit for it, which is absolutely not what I'm going to do. Give me just a second. The fact that this is kind of your fourth shot at it um, makes me wonder what I was thinking the prior three times, and really. All right, Ms. Um, Johnson, at this time, I'm going to find that you entered your pleas of true to counts one through four freely and voluntarily. Find those counts true. Find sufficient evidence to find you guilty. And at this time, find you guilty of aggravated assault. Which is a second degree felony. One second. It's not a deadly weapon, or was there a what the indictment looks like from I'm going to sentence you to a term of 12 years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will receive credit for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. Uh, am making an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon in your case. I'm handing you the trial court certification that shows this was not an agreement. You do have some rights to appeal. You can talk to Mr. Rojas about that. I'm also handing you the trial court certification. I mean, the a written admonishment regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Because of the judgment entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term, and you should read the written admonishment I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long that lasts, you can talk to Mr. Rojas. Good luck to you. You can go back with the bailiff. So we've got Luis De La Rosa, cause number 23, DCCR 1990. Wait, sir, are you, uh, there you go, thank you. Are you Luis De La Rosa? And Mr. De La Rosa was previously in court entered a plea of guilty to the third degree felony offense of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. Uh, the agreement was for a cap of eight years in prison. I've received a copy of the pre-sentence report. Has everyone had an opportunity to review that report? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, yeah. Are there any additions or corrections? Uh, not from the defense, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Holmes, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as the court can see, um, Mr. Uh, Rosa is an amputee, um, which he suffered from uh, injury a few years ago. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we're requesting if the court would consider probation. I believe that Mr. De La Rosa would benefit from being on a mental caseload as well. Um, he does uh, suffer from some uh, mental issues that I feel that would be beneficial if he could receive care through in, either MHMR or Spindletop. Uh, he understands that he does have um, prior convictions, so as a convicted felon, so he cannot possess a firearm. And um, he understands that um, moving forward, no matter what situation he's in, he cannot have firearms. 
Uh, Your Honor, he does have uh, two children um, that he would like to be better involved in their lives. One of the main issues that I see in the PSI is education. Um, he has a sixth grade education. I think it would also benefit if, uh, if he would be allowed and participate in the GED program um, through the probation department as well to help him to develop some skills um, so that he can make better decisions and um, get his high school, at least minimum high school equivalency. Um, there is a history in regards to substance, um, with regards to substance abuse, so it looks like maybe alcohol um, that he drinks on occasion. Um, and he has no problem, it says, on his recommendations to avoid any association with the co-defendant, Ashley Fay. Um, and as I stated, Your Honor, he would uh, be willing to adhere to any referrals or treatment plans uh, or directives that um, probation um, may recommend. And so we are requesting probation. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Nichols. Your Honor, he has three prior felony convictions, one for being a felon in possession of a firearm, one for aggravated assault with death. He should have been habitual. Uh, I took into consideration his health issues when I made the offer of an eight-year cap. Um, I don't think, think I don't I don't know that he deserves any more consideration uh, for, for what has happened to him. Uh, you see his gang history, his criminal history. I think eight years is appropriate. And I'm sorry, Mr. De La Rosa, you wanted to say something? So in 2015, you were not a juvenile. 2015, that was years. That was your conviction for unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. And you got a two-year sentence. Right. So you should have learned. Not that you can't possess a firearm. I mean, and Miss Holmes is doing the best she can, saying that you know you understand and that you can't possess a firearm, but you've already you've already gone to prison for that. So I, I was at the wrong period, wrong time. I mean, I it wasn't my position. Due to the fact that I am a felon, I'm not denying. It. But, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm good to serve, uh, I feel like a second chance or something. Well, but I always keep throwing, like, I don't want to get thrown in prison, come out when I'm 30 years, something like that. Well, and I understand, well, and here's the thing, Mr. Delarosa, I, I, nobody wants to get thrown in prison. And what I do today isn't anything that I'm doing, it's where you've gotten yourself with your history since you've been a juvenile into being an adult knowing that you cannot possess a firearm. Uh, you've got three prior felony offenses. One was when you were certified as a juvenile, that first one. Um, and then if you didn't understand the law about deadly weapons, you should have, or carrying a firearm, you should have back in 2015. Um, I'm going to find that you entered your plea of guilty freely and voluntarily. Find uh, sufficient evidence to find you guilty and at this time find you guilty of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. I'm going to sentence you to a term of six years in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Corrections. You will receive credit on that sentence for any time that you've been in custody that the law gives you the right to receive. I'm handing you the trial court certification that shows this was an agreement. I followed so you've waived your right to appeal. I have also handed you a written admonishment <laughs> regarding your ineligibility to possess a firearm or ammunition. Obviously, we know this now. I'm required by law to read this to you. Because of the judgment entered against you, you're ineligible under Texas law to possess a firearm or ammunition. Possession of a firearm or ammunition could lead to charges against you. Firearm is a legal term. You should read the written admonishment I provide you to see what devices qualify as a firearm. If you have questions about the laws that make you ineligible to possess a firearm or ammunition or about how long that lasts, you can talk to Ms. Holmes. All right, good luck to you, sir. You can go back with the bailiff. All right, on this case, so an offer was tendered? Yes, Judge. All right, and has your client had a chance to speak with the immigration attorney? We discussed this last time, Judge. The charge is murder, so it, it doesn't yes, have any know. bearing. It'll be automatic deportation if he's convicted of the charge and then released after his stint in prison and or probation. All right, and you have all the discovery? I have all the discovery. They just finally got the transcript yes. of the translation of the interviews. Is that right? I correct. All and right. So I'll get that. Um, 
I, last time we were here, Judge, my client uh, brought up the issue that he wants another attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, he's upset with me, upset with me because I won't file a motion to withdraw. At this point, there's still not a conflict. Okay. All right. So here's the thing, uh, Mr. Moreno Vasquez, I want you to hear me and I want you to internalize what I'm saying. Okay. If you want another attorney, you need to hire one. Do you understand? Yes. I don't know what the issue you may or may not have with your attorney. Sometimes the issue people have with an attorney is they're not getting the offer. They're not getting the offer that they want. Here's the thing. I've been a defense attorney. I've been a prosecutor. In this court, I require that the state tender an offer to the defense. You can either accept it or reject it. Or you can tell your attorney I'm accepting it, in which case we will do a plea bargain agreement. Everyone, please whisper. Thank you, Judge. If they make an offer and you want to accept it, then we'll do the plea paperwork. You will enter your plea. If they make an offer and you say, I'm not accepting it, then one or two things will happen. Either you go to your attorney and say, I'm not accepting this offer, but I will accept A, B, or C offer. That is what's called a counter offer. Your attorney will take what you will accept, if that's the case, to the state. And then at that point, the state can say, all right, we will accept the offer that you want, or as we call it, the counter offer, or the state will say, we're rejecting that offer. And the only offer we will make you is the offer we made you. Do you understand? Can I say something? Yes. If you want to say something about what the state offer is, no, because I'm not allowed to hear that. Plea negotiations are supposed to be confidential unless you're accepting an offer. Do you understand? Yes. If you want to talk about the facts of your case, the only way I will hear the facts of your case is if you are entering a plea bargain agreement or if there's a jury trial or a bench trial. Do you understand? Yes, I just want to talk about my case, that's all. No, the person you speak to your case about is your attorney. Okay, si, si me lo puede yes, can you change attorneys or not? All right, hear me, hear me clearly. Abogado, you need to hire one. I don't know why people think that when attorneys are appointed to them, and I mean no disrespect when I say this, it appears to me that sometimes beggars are becoming choosers. If you see somebody who needs food and you offer them a hamburger, and they say, no, I want lobster. This is your attorney. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this attorney. If you want another attorney, you need to hire one. Do you understand? Okay. Yes, it's been a long time and he has never said anything to me, never said anything to me. So I'm just waiting. Oh, well, here's the thing. You're here, he's here. He can say something to you today. But my question for you is, did you receive the offer? Yes or no? No. No. All right. So he said, I, I know, I know. But if you will indulge the court, he's going to tender the offer to you that the state has made. When he tenders the offer to you, I want you to internalize it. Think about it. And then you will come back before the court and you will let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? Yes, I understood. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Mr. Moreno Vasquez, you've received the plea offer from the state. Yes, he gave me an offer. All right. Did you understand it? No, 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 no. Let me stop you right there. Here's the thing. 
You're charged with murder. That's what the state is offering. All I need to know from you is whether or not you receive the offer. That's yes or no. Yes, I did receive the offer. All right. So are you accepting the offer or rejecting the offer? Or do you need time to think about the offer? No, no, no. Rejects it. All right. Ms. Ferguson, state how long... Uh, will this jury trial last? Judge, I'll just take the one that's co defendant. Okay. And so it, it, it doesn't have a lot of moving parts. So, actually, case in chief, I'd imagine three A's, tops, but that's not including jury selection or the punishment. All right, Ms. Ferguson, it's going to be a week for a jury trial on Mr. Marco Antonio Marino Vasquez. And state, I know you have other murder cases upcoming. Yes. So if you want to speak to Ms. Okay. Ferguson. And Judge, there's a co-defendant case. They may want to go on a co-defendant case first. All right. Well, we'll put this down and we'll see who goes first. And Joseph Stateson? Yes, Your Honor. Monica Guerrero is on the co-defendant on this case. I was hoping to announce after this announcement was finished. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine. I don't have any plans for the end. All right. What, September 3rd. Your jury trial date is going to be September 3rd. All right. Is there, you have any questions? Yes. And you'll be brought over dressed in whatever civilian clothing you have at the jail. If you wish to be attired in something different, you'll need to speak to your attorney and sign a clothing exchange. I'll take care of that, Judge. All right, thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. We will go on the record in the matter 17 CF 172, State of Wisconsin versus Nicole Simmons. The state appears through Assistant District Attorney Kevin Schmidt in person. We have Ms. Simmons in person with counsel in custody with counsel Eugene Harrington. We're set today in this matter for a sentencing hearing on revocation. Um, Ms. Simmons pled guilty on March 14th, 2019. Um, she has now since been revoked to the court, has reviewed the revocation order and warrant packet, victims' rights compliance. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right. A uh, victim is present and here. Victim would like to make a statement. And victim would like to make a statement. All right. Victim can come sit up here on the black uh, desk. Can either state the name for the record or um, initials and uh, then may provide the statement. <coughs> My name is Teresa Ekstrom. And I wish to make a statement in the matter of, of Nicole stealing my vehicle. Um, she, she, we, we were good friends at one time and she uh, babysat for my children when they were small. And then when she had children, we babysat for her and she lived with us for a time. She uh, um, she worked during those times at various jobs. Um, she decided to uh, borrow my car without my permission. She just came into the house late at night. It was after after nine thirty at night. She came into the house. She told my husband that I had given her permission to use my car when I had not. And uh, 
I had gone to bed, so I had no I, no idea where my car was. Um, I just know that I got up the next morning and uh, it was gone and I reported it stolen. Um, she was ordered to pay restitution. She has not paid one penny of restitution. Um, it's, I feel as though she feels she doesn't owe me anything when uh, even though you ordered it, she hasn't paid any restitution. And it's just been a real struggle to to get by from day to day. Some days are worse than others. Um, but I believe that a person should be, pay their bills and if they're if they do something wrong, I believe they should pay for it. And I believe Nicole should pay for stealing my car. Thank you. All right, Mr. Schmidt, argument and sentencing recommendation. Uh, before that, I've received the packet. I have no corrections. Oh yeah. Okay. Have you received the packet? I, I have no corrections. Oh, okay. Uh, DOC recommends six to nine months. Uh, nine months is the max. I'm going to be recommending the max of nine months jail. Uh, but my calculation, her sentence credit is 98 days. If you include today as the end date using the packet, that's uh, January 2nd to today. Uh, when I read the packet initially, uh, I, I kind of stopped halfway because I realized why is a 2017 case coming back for revocation in 2024, uh, seven years later? And what really struck me and where I think the court's starting point in this case should be the victim's statement, not just today, but back at sentencing. Uh, the victim impact statement that she wrote back then was very clear. She didn't want probation. She wanted jail. The victim complained that at the time Nicole stole her car, she was already currently on probation for stealing her debit card. The victim wrote, quote, I feel that Nikki won't learn unless she has to pay by losing her freedom, end quote. Um, the state made a different plea agreement back then. I think we can conclusively say now that the, sta the state was wrong. We should have done jail back then. I think the victim was right. Uh, regardless, the court filed the plea agreement back then and ordered Nicole on probation on March 14, 2019. So the case took like two years to resolve, and then she was sentenced to probation. According to CCAP notes, uh, the, uh, what the court ordered was uh, to pay back the $3,500. The court ordered $300 a month. Uh, the packet indicates that the defendant absconded within a month of uh, going on probation and has been absconding for five years. She was using methamphetamine, consuming alcohol, and committed countless thefts and lied to the police about her name. I, I think I can say that because the packet indicates that those crimes have actually gone to completion. She's been convicted of them over in Minnesota. That also means she's paid zero dollars of restitution in this case. When I checked CCAP, I saw the debit card case. She still owes money on that as well, which leads me to believe it's not very likely she's going to pay back money to the victim in these cases. And that also effectively means that after pleading guilty with a plea deal that she agreed to, to do probation and pay restitution, she essentially immediately changed her mind, if it wasn't her intention from the outset, uh, to basically refuse probation and just kind of take a five-year rain check on punishment without the court's permission. Uh, I find it reprehensible that while she was supposed to be on probation with us, while people are supposed to have the comfort of knowing DOC was watching her, instead she was in Minnesota where she was charged and convicted of uh, robbery, shoplifting, dishonored checks, theft, and two counts of giving false name to the police. So I find that deeply concerning because it tells us a lot about her performance. I guess you'd call it performance on probation is how the court would factor it in, even though she effectively didn't participate in probation, that she was going to continue this behavior, that she was never going to pay the restitution, that she was... <coughs> Never going to participate in the DOC functions that would have uh, enabled perhaps some shot of rehabilitation. I think it shows she had no intention of rehabilitation. Uh, judge, I think given these aggravated circumstances, nine months jail is appropriate. I think 
the victim. I think Ms. Ekstrom, she was right back in 2019 at sentencing and she's right today. Uh, I think probation was completely ineffective in every way, which is what we've learned now. I think jail's necessary now. I think that had the court sentenced her in 2019 to a jail sentence, knowing, you know, she's never going to pay restitution, uh, the aggravating circumstance of being on probation for a theft against the same victim on the same time as sentencing. And when that offense occurred, I think the court would have done something like a nine month sentence back then. <clears throat> uh, so for those reasons, I would ask for the court to also view this as aggravating and do nine months instead of something lower. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. That's <laughs> tone on the, uh, Three factors, gravity of the offense, character and rehabilitative needs of the defendant need to protect the public. And she's convicted of a class A misdemeanor, $10,000, nine months. The uh, crime is aggravated by the victim's statement that uh, it was a product, uh, the plea was a product of an agreement uh, that the state agreed to and, and as did uh, Ms. Simmons. Um, but there's a significant impact upon the victim. So the court, I'm sure, will consider that. <coughs> Character and rehabilitative needs of the defendant. She's 36 years of age. She has five children. She, uh, she's an addict. Uh, substance abuse addiction is not a... Um, Offense to any crime. We know that. These folks generally <coughs> know that. But it's not, uh, uh, it uh, aggravates the criminal behavior, could be considered as an aggravating circumstance, but it also could be considered a mitigating circumstance because oftentimes people that are addicted go from one drink to the next or one. Uh, dosage of methamphetamine to the next. And I think that's really what Nicole has been doing for these years. Uh, Mr. Schmidt characterized it as no intention at rehabilitation. Um, addicts uh, don't often form um, intent uh, uh, to do certain <coughs> things they more appropriately probably just respond to the urges and the cravings that they have for their substance. When I spoke with Nicole the other day, um, we talked about her education and, and treatment and all those sort of things. She's a 2006 graduate of the Grantsburg High School. She has an associate's degree in business management from WITC. She's diagnosed with PTSD from abuse, abusive relationships. She has been in treatment uh, once, twice. She is currently on probation in the state of Minnesota and uh, is awaiting once Wisconsin cases are done and resolved. Uh, she's eligible for a treatment program in Hutchinson Minnesota, it's called uh, uh, Integration. It's a school diagnosis treatment facility for mental health and uh, substance abuse issues. Um, it's a 75% success rate uh, over the course of two years. Uh, her agent in Minnesota is working on that. Um, Nicole, Mr. Smith's correct. The, the Report shows Nicole has engaged in significant criminal behavior since she was placed in probation. She's been convicted, I think it's six times since she was last before the court. Um, simple robbery, theft, shoplifting, false names, a couple times, dishonor check, uh, take transfer, movable property without consent. You know, she's engaged in criminal behavior. All the while, she's been addicted to substances and those sort of things. I asked Nicole the other day, tell me what 
uh, is good about Nicole Simmons. And I wrote it down and I put quotation marks around it. When sober, I'm a good mom. When sober, I'm a hard worker. She was the manager at the Siren Subway um, facility for some 11 years from 2002 to approximately 2015. She had worked there, but she was a manager there for a while. And her recognition now of her good characteristics are conditioned upon when sober. That's, I think, uh, an important uh, realization by her. She is uh, diagnosed with ADHD, or uh, not ADHD, PTSD, uh, acid reflux, depression, anxiety, and she's taking medications for all those. Recently, she gained, uh, she told me this, eight pounds in just a couple days. She has uh, a fluid buildup. I told her uh, to bring her blood pressure record form uh, that she's been keeping in the jail. Her blood pressure generally is elevated. Uh, she came here, it was 104 over, seven, uh, 104 over 78. This morning it was 141 over 95. Um, they're going to um, get her some medication, a water pill, to get rid of some of the fluid that's being built up in her legs and uh, presumably in her cavity, chest cavity as well. We suggest that the court uh, sentence her to six months, uh, which is certainly the low range of the Department of Corrections. Uh, with respect to the credit for time served, uh, Nicole was arrested <clears throat> October 4th, 2023 in Holmes Olmstead County. All of her Minnesota cases were completed and placed in probation as the packet reflects by November 7th. She's been in custody on the on the Burnett County warrants since November 7th. Uh, and November 7th to today is 153 days. Uh, we would submit that the law uh, entitles her to credit for that. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, uh, when you calculate from January 2nd to today, uh, is uh, my calculation was 97, but Mr. Schmidt came up with 98. And, and that's whether you count the first day and the last day. But um, I would submit that uh, six months with 150 day, 153 days credit is appropriate. Um, she needs rehabilitation. You knew that in 2017. She needs treatment. She's made some effort to do that. Um, the court can ensure her sobriety by keeping her upstairs. Uh, when we we, society gets done with the enforced sobriety of jail, there needs to be a plan or that uh, those cravings and, and uh, feelings of addiction will come back up and, and she will be uh, a problem for society again. Enter a judgment, money judgment for the restitution. I, I think uh, I've done bankruptcy in 30 years, but I think Judgments uh, uh, based upon criminal behavior are not dischargeable. So it's just a matter of time when Nicole's going to have to address <coughs> that money that she owes. Um, and that's the solution. With that, I I'd urge the court to sentence her to six months and 153 days credit. Thank you, Judge. What about the 30 hours of community service the court ordered back in the day because of uh, the issue and the agreement that was reached? Essentially, that's why the court ordered 30 hours community service because of the same victim, same thing that put her on probation before. And she needed to provide to the community and uh, give back. How should the court view that? Because I'm guessing- That's an that aggravating fact. That's, that's aggravating. Uh, the, 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 what's aggravating and what's mitigating on the, on the balance of the scale, I know where that falls. Um, all I can say is she's an addict. It's not a defense. 
it it aggravates the offenses, but it's also mitigating because what addiction does to the brain and the ability to make rational, good decisions. That's the reality we have. All right, thank you. Mr. Schmidt, I have Mr. Harrington stating that it's 153 days of jail credit. You're stating 98 days. Do you stipulate, do you contest? I do not, I stipulate. Um, I believe Mr. Harrington is referring to time in Minnesota, one of the jails he believes counts towards it. The DOC packet doesn't talk about that. What I would suggest is the court ordering the 98 today and then attorney Harrington could give me like where she was placed and when and then I could call the jail and be like, my concern is I think she might have been serving a sentence. She was sentenced out in Minnesota. So I'd want to check that. And with regards to 97 versus 98, are you counting today because you would not count? I did count today. today. You That's did not? The difference. And I didn't add, quite honestly, I didn't go day, 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 day. Mr. Schmidt's counting today. I was not. So it's so my counting is 97. Days. So it's 97 days jail credit if or until the court <coughs> hears otherwise as it relates to the time she served in Olmstead County in the Minnesota matter. Um, all right, Ms. Simmons, do you care to make any statement here today? Mr. Harrington, can you put the microphone to her, please? I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm not really good with this. I, um, I have messed up. I definitely own up to that. Um, I'm, I'm alcoholic really bad. And, uh, and he was right when he said, I'm, I'm caring, I'm, I'm funny, and I'm a good mom when I'm sober. And, um, you know, my life has been a little chaotic, and I just, I wanted to get it back together. And um, also, my health is not, not the best right now. So I'm supposed to see a cardiologist, but I can't because I'm incarcerated. So um, I'm really worried about that as well. <coughs> um, I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. Thank you. Ms. Simmons, I remember your case, quite honestly, very vividly and very clearly. And when I saw that you were uh, back in custody, I'm like, oh, I haven't seen Nicole in a long time. And this is why because immediately when you were on a uh, place on probation for this case, you absconded and you disappeared. You ran, quite honestly. You didn't do what you had promised to do because this was a negotiation and it did take your attorney and the state um, to negotiate and, um, and come from the felony down to the misdemeanor and was for all of the good and positive reasons. And it was the victim did make a statement back then, which was impactful. And she did again here today that in, in part, it had to do with the negotiating down from a felony to a misdemeanor was in part because the victim did say, you have always been a close part of her family, her life, and you essentially stabbed her in the back. Addiction does take over and addiction is a demon. It really is, but it doesn't excuse the behavior and it doesn't excuse stealing and taking and destroying the people who have always been there for you. And that would be um, Miss Ekstrom. She has been a part of your life, essentially your whole life. And then you, instead of how did you repay her, not in a positive way with negativity and you continue to take and take and take from her. And so you had the, the benefit back then of having it amended from a felony down to the misdemeanor. And then you had said, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's right. I remember this vividly. I remember it so clearly that you said, I'm going to pay her back. I'm going to show her that I didn't want to do this, but you didn't within a month or two, you were gone and you didn't pay your restitution. You didn't give back to the community, um, as you said, and do the community service. You didn't uh, do the services or go to probation. You didn't seek out treatment. You didn't try and do anything to better yourself and your life and your children's lives. When you are sober, I fully believe you are a good mom, a dedicated mom. But for the most part, you're not there. 
your children don't have the, the gift of having their mother be present in their life. Because when you are high, when you are drunk, when you are under the influence, you are not really present. Your body may be there, your heart, your mind, your soul is not. And your children know that. And so when every time you've been choosing the drugs, the alcohol, the crimes, the things, you've been choosing that over your children. You've been choosing that over yourself. And I think you need time to sober up and get clean. And you need time to be punished because you ran. And, but for the fact that this was amended from a felony to a misdemeanor, and this is the only but for that fact, your butt would have been back here in this chair a whole heck of a long time ago. But you were given the grace of the misdemeanor. And so I cannot extradite you back here to Wisconsin. So you knew that. You knew that a misdemeanor couldn't come back. And I'm going to say you know it because you've been in the system and you've been in the system a long time. So you kept evading responsibility and accountability for this case. <clears throat> and all of that comes back in to play now for the sentencing portion. And that's <coughs> essentially why withheld sentences sometimes bite worse than if the court were to originally have sentenced you with either an imposed or st and stayed or sentenced you to jail up front. Because here, now, with the facts that I have them laid out and with the facts as they were back when you entered your plea, this is a maximum possible penalty. And so I am gonna sentence you to nine months of incarceration with 97 days of jail credit, which I will uh, review if uh, there's any reason to adjust it upward. But even still, it's not going to go extensively up, upward or significantly more upward. But 98 days of jail credit. Three, I believe um, the court is going to enter a civil judgment against you for the restitution. You're always going to owe that. I mean, you could sit additional jail if we have to continue to come uh, back after you to pay because the court is going to order that with regards to the civil judgment, you have to pay $300 a month once you're released. You have the ability to work. You have to pay for yourself and your bills and the things that you owe. And this is one of the things that you owe. Um, you have 20 days to appeal. Should you fail to appeal within 20 days, you do lose that right. Um, I believe that we've covered everything. Um, Mr. Schmidt. Nothing from me. Nothing except, our, Mr. Schmidt, are you going to call Olmstead County? I've got 45 minutes after this. I was going to ask uh, what dates and just do it right, right now. All right. We'll take care of that. But uh, no, I do not. All right. Anymore. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Then we are adjourned. Thanks, sir. Uh, Braylon Simon. Yeah. What are we doing on this? Are you, are you about to start trying? Yeah, in five minutes. What are we, what are we doing? Are, are you this this case thing? will be disposed of if you give me 30 days. Uh, I've received everything and not been able to go over it with him. So it will be disposed of. And he has a misdemeanor case that I'm, I'm working on too, on uh, the same transaction. That's what I was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. I just wanted to see if I could line up the misdemeanor. You're in court. That's what you feel like you wear to impress? This is your life. You're looking at up to 10 years in prison. Slime, self-made bully. I don't know. What message are you trying to send to anybody who reads that? This It's not funny. I don't find it comical. Excuse I mean, me. this is a court of law. It's like, would you wear that in church? Why not? Why wouldn't you wear that in church? Why, why wouldn't you wear that in church? Why? It's disrespectful. And this court is a court of honor. It's a court of law. It, it's the premier place we resolve issues without shooting and killing each other over disputes.
Exactly. We do it in a civilized fashion. It's, it represents civilization, civilized thought. But all that does is pull that down. It just shows that you really don't find this really important. This time, would you? Thirty days is all I need. Not five, not six weeks. We need to fall. All right, yeah. four weeks. Get a resetting and settle here before you leave. Can you that? Can you call? Don't don't do it. Something like that in court. Sign first, and then that's just disrespectful to everybody who has to see it. That's good. And you appointed Mr. Bob Ray. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Chris. Next case, State of Kansas versus James Leroy Whitmore, 24 CR 170. Good afternoon, Mr. Whitmore. Good evening. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm in jail. Pardon me? I'm in jail. Yes. Which jail are you in? Butler County. Yes. Mr. Whitmore, you're charged by way of information on or about April 18, 2024 in Butler County, Kansas, with possession of methamphetamine, a level five drug felony. Count two, you're charged, same date and location, possession of paraphernalia for use, a class B non-person non misdemeanor. Those are the charges pending against you. Do you understand the charges? Pardon me? I do, Your Honor. Did you say no? No, I said I do, Your Honor. See, these TVs oh. in our way. Okay. I'm just having a little bit of, I think, Probably. internet oh. connection disrupt disrupting. So, anyways, you do the right to counsel. If you cannot afford an attorney, one would be appointed to represent you. Are you currently employed? I was employed for Coke Industries, but uh, I kind of just, you know, I'd rather my mom is in trouble and I'm going to take care of my mom. I'm watching my mom at a time when she's falling down. She can't stay up. Nobody will stay there with her. A family issue. It's a family matter. And I just have a way of medicating where my mind can be clear. And I know on my seventh step of my mind, you know, there's different things. Your mind works at different steps sometimes when you're feeling like you don't know what's going on, you know, and. Is I'm that an answer high. of no to the question, are you currently employed? I plead the fifth. What does that mean? Pleading the fifth means uh what is there's that? no there's no crime to being employed. That that's a that's a it's a law thing. library, right? I mean if I'm being blamed by something, let God work me out. Let God be the one to judge me. Okay. I'm a John Jolly. Based baby. on based I'm on a, information where excuse me? I'm a Cherokee. I'm a Kitua. I'm a Burt Johnson baby. Yes, I am. I'm a Johnson baby. Okay, very good. Yeah, the I know. court finds you do qualify for counsel uh herein, and the court does appoint Jim Watts to represent you at all stages of the proceedings. Jim Watts is appointed to represent you at all stages of the proceedings. You may retain whomever you wish. To represent you. Subsequently, the court does set your next appearance date before myself. This would be on Monday, June 24, 2024, at 2.30 p.m. Monday, June 24, 2024, 2.30 p.m. by Zoom. By Zoom process at that time. Next item of business is to set appropriate bond. And Mr. Wetmore, what is your current address? 6904 East Bailey, where I've been staying with my mom, but my mom lives there alone and she needs somebody there to help her. And that's the guy. Can you 6904 04 East Bailey? B A I L E Y. B A Y L E Y. Yes, sir. 6904 East yes. Bailey. Yes. Street. What city? Wichita, Kansas, 316. I don't need no other area code. I'm independently known. In Wichita. Wichita, Kansas. What's your zip well, code? That's a zip stuff. Zipping. That's what's messing us up. My air code is either 67208 or 67218. And I know justice and staff too. Because Jehovah's really a woman. 
Okay, six seven two one eight or six seven zero eight. Yeah. And outside of your mother, do you have any other family that reside in Butler County, Kansas? No, uh, Kansas, man. What about one of them slaves? Uh, if you make it to Kansas, you're free. What is all this battling for, man? I'm just trying to be like, you're do, on. I guess you're do you on. have any family that reside in Butler County, Kansas? I just need medical. I need to be in the I need to be like Good Shepherd. I need to be in, the, you know, St. Joe Hospital where I was born. Be at Christie, where they're trying to say Be at Christie is Illuminati now. Okay, the court finds need, there's no response to whether there's any. Uh, Family uh, in this in Butler County, Kansas, and we're recommendation we're for Ball and Mr. Canfield. Ain't you? We're family. We're just. I'm you happy to to be my birth certificate heavily proven. Mr. Uh, Whitmore, please be quiet. I need to listen to Mr. Canfield in regards to recommendation really of Bond. Really going places. People like to talk. They will request a five thousand cash charity bond in this case. Thank you. I do believe that would be appropriate. $5,000 cash or surety bond. $5,000 cash or surety bond. And Mr. Whitmore, you're next now, you for myself by Zoom you. on the coach, felony coach, preliminary coach, hearing coach. control hey. docket. Brandon. Monday, June 24, 2024, at 2.30. Like there being nothing further to come man. before the court, Court is in recess. And Mr. Mr. Whitmore, have a good day. Whatever. Well, I had to make it just a tad bit shorter tonight, but I thank you guys all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>